uh, I'm going to mute all. And I just want to say it's great um, to have this chat time um, be, um, you know, beforehand from 9.30 to 10, just to talk and chat and uh, visit with each other. So I really enjoy that. Um, getting to know each other. It's not like being in person, but anyway, um, welcome to um, our first uh, meeting of this year for Paperworks. Uh, my name's Bobby Wilson, the president, and I have, I was thinking back about last year at this time in September. Oh my gosh, you know, it was our first meeting on Zoom. I was terrified, just terrified to do this and actually terrified for paperworks like what is the year going to be like and how are we going to how are we going to do this and um but i have to say my board has been great they have stepped up members have been great and have um just um stepped up and taken over different things and um, I just want to read you a little bit of what we did last year in spite of uh, the pandemic. So um, looking back, we had eight wonderful speakers, starting with David Fitzsimmons. In uh, January, we had Mabel Dean, who kicked off our 20th year in January and talking about um, this is going to be Paperwork's 20th year, and she is the one who started it. And it was a wonderful program, and I think got us all psyched about uh, what we're about and our history. Um, we had last year a Paperwork's 20 challenge, and that was three or four months, we asked Paperworks members to think about what 20 means to them. And we had wonderful responses and a little uh, contest on that. Um, and you can still see the work on our slides on our webpage. We had a Paperworks book exchange from Febu February to March, where we made three handmade books and got three back. Um, we had a winter and summer postcard pails. We produced and mailed a journal in May of 2020, What I Love About Tucson from the Coastal History Museum. We have four creative meetup groups that are going strong. We have the, we have the Poetry Center. We have the Recycled Art Group. That maybe um, needs some um, up, up, well, updating, but we have the altered book group and sketching and our poetry center um, group. So we have lots of groups that are meeting on their own. I have to say Kathy Dannerbeck did a wonderful um, six week class on canvas placemats, floor cloths, painting your own. And it was her idea and she taught it and it was open to all Paperworks members. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, Laura Russell hosted a poetry chap book exchange, which many of us participated in, and it was a wonderful learning experience. Um, last year, we had the San Diego Book Arts Traveling Book Project. And we'll talk a little bit this past summer, we've done the Wish You Were Here with seven book arts groups and it was a postcard exchange with 175 people. Uh, we've done show and tells at the monthly meetings. We wanna hear from you and, and see what you're up to. Um, Judy Derrickson did a COVID art postcard show last year. We've done studio tours via Zoom. And one of a really proud moment is we were able to raise almost $2,000 for scholarships, thanks to Diana Davis and um, a lot of other contributors. And we were able to award scholarships again this year to um, University of Arizona scholars, uh, students and to Pima College, which means so much. And hopefully this uh, coming year, I can get the students here to talk to you and have them show you their work. Um, we've also had a logo uh, challenge where um, people are giving their 20 year logos to Krista and we're putting those on our webpage and e-news. 
And um, let's see what else we have going on. We have a 20 year journal that is coming up. Margaret Suchland is working on that. Um, Krista's been collecting bi biographies of our founding members. We started a YouTube channel um, and we started an Instagram page and um, we continue to put out an e-news with wonderful information and a website with great information. And so, and also, so I would say it's been a really good year in spite of COVID, <laughs> you know, and those connections we have made together, uh, the different ways has just been wonderful and has gotten me through this thing, you know, that we're all, that we're all doing. So I thank you all. And I thank my wonderful board. You know, it's a new board and we haven't even really, we haven't met in person. So it's by phone calling, um, emailing. Um, so it's not as easy as it was, but I have to say we're doing well. And, um, and, but I need your feedback, your help, and it comes from you too, ideas. So let's see, where am I at here? Okay, I'm not so terrified as I was a year ago about leading them. I wish we were together because our September meeting um, is always like going back to school, your new box of crayons, we get to see everybody, people bring in what they've been working on. Um, and we don't have that opportunity uh, today, but we are together. It's great to have over 40 people here and we have a great program planned for you. So, um, so I just want to say I am looking and the board is looking for your input to just help paperworks keep moving forward and to be meaningful to you and for us to connect with each other. So, um, you know, I'll be putting things in the e-news. One thing I do need um, is one or two people, maybe two coordinators Paperworks will be having a show at Pima College in April, April and um, with David Andres. And I need somebody to kind of coordinate that um, exhibition that we'll be having, setting the theme and pick up and drop off dates and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that, uh, send me a text or something and I'll get back to you and we can talk. Um, and I just want to say, please invite your friends to our meetings. They're always open, free to the public, and they can see what kind of group we are. So without further ado, let's start first with um, Anita. And I'm going to ask her to talk about the Poetry Center and that meetup group and let us know what's going on. Um, so let's spotlight Anita. And where is Anita? There she is. Hi, Anita. <laughs> Are you unmuted? Can we hear you? I, I am yes. unmuted. Can you good, hear me? Good. Yes. Before I start, start my little thing here, I just want to give Bobby a really big thanks for keeping this together. I mean, not only just her normal stuff, but this past year and keeping this group going. And it is a fantastic group of people and organizations. So Bobby, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, for, okay, I have four items here that I want to go through quickly and be as clear as possible. Number one, we were supposed to have an in-person meeting at the Poetry Center tomorrow. Um, that is canceled due to the Delta variant. They're not taking any groups right now at the Poetry Center at all. So, um, but in its place, this is number two now, um, Julie Swartzthat Johnson, who is the Poetry Center's archivist and outreach librarian, will be attending a Zoom meeting that we're organizing. Now that is October the 8th. So you might wanna write that down. She's going to be showing us the new display cases, talking about uh, how to display artist books. She'll talk a little bit about their collection of artist books, and she will be live to answer any of your questions for those who want to um, join the Zoom group. That will be recorded, so it will be available anytime if you can't make it to the October 8th Zoom meeting. The link will be in the PW website. 
which um, under, let's see, I've written this down. Uh, it'll be under the posted in the PW website. Uh, click on creative meetups, scroll to the exhibition at Poetry Center, and it's the same link that we use for all of our monthly meetings, which everybody's invited to um, at any time. Open, open. Um, so this is an opportunity I asked Julie questions too. Uh, it's not just her talking at us, we'll be able to talk with her. So please attend if you can. Um, number three, the regular um, Poetry Center exhibit meeting, um, Zoom meeting, which is called Imagine, Imagine, uh, will be meeting September the 11th. That's in a couple Saturday, that's Saturday. And my fourth announcement is the, sub, the formal submission requirements to enter the Poetry Center exhibit um, will be posted. If they're not posted right now on the website, they will be posted very, very soon. Um, one thing to note is that we have moved the entry deadline up to January 15th, so it's not in the holiday season, so that we're not all conflicted with everything going on there. So check that out, check the websites for any updates, and I think that's all I have to say. Now, if you have any questions whatsoever, you'll see on the uh, submission guidelines, actually they're requirements, but guidelines, um, my email address will be on there. Email me. Please feel free to email me if you have any problems, any questions. And um, that's all I have to say. It's exciting. It's an exciting time. It's a good time to be making art. Uh, I know a lot of people had trouble creating art there for a while during the early parts of the pandemic. Um, but hopefully we're all back to creating some and doing collaborations and joining in all these wonderful events at Paperworks. Oh my goodness. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Anita. Thank you. Okay, and if you have any uh, questions, you can put them in chat or um, let uh, Anita know. So um, this has just been, I have to say, the poetry uh, group and the, um, the meetup group has just, I think it's been worth the price of admission. Uh, you know, to be a Paperworks member, just to be part of that group, which is open to any Paperworks member. Just the feedback, the ideas um, that we've been sharing with each other has been wonderful. And I have grown um, because of that. So, okay, let's move on. Um, I want to talk about the upcoming classes and workshops. And I'm so excited because um, this year, um, we're going to start meeting in person a little bit, we hope. So Michelle Vaughn and Maria Lee, um, can we spotlight the two of you maybe? Um, let's see. I'll go ahead and jump in and then Maria, I'll ask you to talk about your two classes coming up. I'm so glad that you're here so you can give a lot more details than I would normally give. So the first one Maria's teaching is the 17th, which is next Friday. It's an all day, but it's, you know, it's not like a eight hour day. All the details, like Anita said, all the details for the workshops are also on our website. So if you don't catch what I say here in the meeting, everything is either on the website or it will be on the website. So Maria Lee is doing her first one in September. It is in person, that's exciting. Maria Lee and Joe Anderson are teaching one in November and it'll be a two day workshop called the Exquisite Corpse. And I'll let Maria share all the really fun details about that. That's gonna be a super fun class. And Sue Agnew and I have booked two artists for what we think of as our typical paperworks workshops in the springtime. And that's the two and a half day format where we meet after the Thursday meeting for half day, and then we do all day Friday, Saturday. And Sue and I are super excited to announce that Roxanne Evans-Stout will be coming from where she, Oregon in January. So she'll be talking at our January meeting and teaching, she's calling it Desert Blooms. It's a mixed media, make your own artist book, handmade book, art journal, lots of different names for it. Roxanne Evans-Stout does a lot with nature and with botanicals and mixing that into your art journal. And we talked about what 
botanicals are found in the desert. So she's going to do a little bit more of a desert theme. That will be super fun. And our, we get to call, I think Suzanne's probably on, but I think we can now call her our very own Suzanne Moore because she is now a Tucson resident and a Paperworks member, is going to be teaching the February workshop and she's titled hers called Making Your Mark. And if you've seen Suzanne's work, she does absolutely beautiful work with writing and turning writing into images and things to use in other work or as a standalone. Suzanne's an awesome teacher and does absolutely beautiful work. So those are four in-person workshops that we have coming up. I wanted you all to know that we have four coming up so that if you have to pick and choose, you'll be able to look at all of them. Maria Lee's information for her accordion fold is on the website. And the next three will be on the website in the next three to four weeks. I wanted to let you know what they are and all the details will be coming. I haven't provided it to Anne yet, but once I do, she will put it on the website. And it'll come out in the newsletter when the signups open and what the cost is. So watch the website and watch the amazing newsletter that Krista and Kelly put out. Every amount of detail that you want will be in there. So it's really exciting. Thanks to Sue. She's been um, really, we're partners in this. She's been great. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Malia, Maria, Malia, <laughs> made up a new name for you, Maria. Turn it over to Maria Hello. so she can give you more details about what she's teaching in both September and then teaching with Joe in November. Hi, everybody. So I hope I can get a few more spots filled for um, next Friday. We're going to meet at nine from 9.30 to 2.30. And we're going to basically be exploring all things accordion. Um, you should be able to go home with about seven or so samples the sample pack and why we while we're making our accordions we're going to be um, also upping our technique on measuring cutting gluing and um, like one of the books we'll be making is just a basic fold accordion uh, a non this is an example of a non glue hardcover book um, we're going to be talking about all the ways that you could make a, a flag book this is with a hardcover um i'll be showing some samples this is a, a book collaborative book i made at pima with the class um with a, a flutter structure this kind of has a it's a great way to exhibit this book but um as a printmaker i'm also going to discuss uh, ways to incorporate um, content in the book so it's not only just we're not going to just be making like accordion fold, we're going to be using the accordion and um, experimenting different ways to incorporate it. For example, um, something with pockets. Um, this is a something that is a long strip of paper, just printed, and then folded with a semi hard cover. Um, here's an example of an accordion, but with uneven folded pages with watercolor. Anyway, those are some samples I have. And um, I think the benefit from taking this class is that while we're making and folding, we're gonna be discussing strategies for um, building on the structure, creative strategies. We're going to um, talk about content. We're gonna talk about different kinds of closures for books. So I feel like it's gonna be a full full 9.30 to 2.30 with a little half hour break for lunch to um, use the accordion as a jumping off to explore it further. So I think, I think it'll be a really inspirational class. And um, hopefully you'll sign, I can get the rest of the people to sign up by Sunday night. Sunday night, I will be sending all the participants a email telling you what to bring, uh, links to sites you can look at, um, tools to bring, paper to cut. Although I will be providing about 90% of the papers that are already cut to size so that we can just jump right in and start making. So if you have any questions, um, 
you can write that in the chat and, and I can email you back or um, you can directly email me at marialee 62 gmail.com. I'll write that in the chat. And then real quickly, I wanted to talk about the next workshop that I'll be teaching, co-teaching with Joe Anderson on November 5th, Friday, continuing on November 7th, Sunday. It's a two-day workshop combining printmaking, printing uh, a book. So the first day is covering uh, carving um, rubber blocks and printing. We're gonna have a press uh, with us. And then Sunday will be the folding and constructing of a hardcover book. And there's a sample that I did with Joe. Is that forward or back? It's backwards, right? No, no it's, it's forward. It's okay. Oh, okay. Um, we did we did a workshop, but we it's based on the accordion, uh, the exquisite corpse, where the first person actually writes um, a phrase, passes it to the second person who responds with their phrase, and then that person hides the first phrase but leaves theirs exposed and hands it to the third, and so forth. So we ended up with. Um, a, a surrealist poem and everybody printed a little rubber block. Uh, we printed it together. There's a template where we can all print at once, but everybody inks up their plate. And then um, day two, we will assemble it into a hardcover book. So you'll be printing on the easy carve blocks. And then, um, our group did another sample where we carved the backside of their blocks with the same poem, but we decided to do the layout way more freeform, and that was a lot of fun. So this is the page that you get before it's folded. And depending on the size of the class, we can break up into groups of four or five so that each group will create their own book poem and have it printed. So that will be a lot of fun. That's uh, November 5th and 7th. Um, and for those of you that some of you might have seen this, but last year, me and Joe also taught a workshop at uh, in Silver City with Karen Heimer's Light Art Space Gallery. And that was also, um, we made an accordion book based on the exquisite corpse, but that was printed. So this year, because of the Poetry Center um, using artful text, we decided to incorporate the same project, but with words. Um, That's wonderful, Maria. Yeah, so they're really fun and, and a lot gets done in the uh, full day and then the two day. You actually go home with a, uh, a really beautiful book. Great. I hope. And I just wanna say that, uh, well, I've taken from Maria, many people have, she taught the book uh, book arts class at Pima College for several years, and you learn so much. And this is also for if you've never made a book in your life. It's for the beginner to somebody who's, um, you get so much out of it. So I just want to encourage you all, if you have the time, um, read our policy for meeting. Um, we're expecting people to be vaccinated and um, you know, the protocols will be, but it'll be nice to be together in person. So thank you, Maria, appreciate it. And um, I wanted to get back to Michelle real quickly. Um, Michelle, who, um, let's see, I'm going to um, talk about the um, Instagram page that you started and tell us about that. Sure, I created an Instagram account at Paperworks Tucson, and a lot of people have started following it. Thank you. I have not posted that much. I post when I have time and when I think about it. So I'm looking for ideas. If you want to send me pictures, I have great photos from the postcard exchange. Thanks to Sue Agnew for putting all those on our new Google Drive, and I'll be posting those. So it's just a way for us to keep in touch. I just see it as a place for our artwork, showing our artwork, talking about our upcoming workshops, our meetings, and so on. That said, I'm not totally attached to it. I don't have to own this account or the Facebook account for that matter. 
if somebody loves to do social media, I'm happy to give you access and, and post. So don't feel like you can't post, please. If you want to have access to it, I'd be happy to give it to you and, and keep it going. So I don't really see it as a, as a communicating art going on out in the world. We know that Jade does an amazing job with her newsletter. So there are sources for that. So I really see it as internal members sharing their artwork like the postcard exchange and talking about upcoming workshops and our meetings. So add that to your Instagram account list and follow us. Great. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun here. I thank you, Michelle, for doing that for us. You bet. Okay, so we have a few more things to do. We're going to have our summer postcard exchange with Sue Agnew. And then um, the book arts calendar update. Jade Queck is going to talk to us about that. And then I am going to go over a little bit uh, about the web page. And we have a couple of announcements. So let's start with Sue Agnew. And um, can we spotlight Sue? And she's going to do a slideshow of our summer postcard. There she is. And Sue has been in charge of this for many, many years. So we thank you, Sue. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I started doing it because the, the person who was in charge of it was actually my secret pal. And then she just suddenly, she had a, I think a brain aneurysm, Libby Kruger, and passed away. And so in her memory, I started doing it. And I don't know why it's not a full screen, but that's the way it goes. Um, we had 28 participants this summer and 20 of them sent me photos. So thank you. And I am showing you what's on the website so you can uh, go back and you'll probably want to because I'm going to have to bomb through these pretty fast. So, um, damn it. I guess I'll do it this way. So here's the first set I got and I got them real soon after we started there by Nancy Wilkinson. And I am guessing that they went through the mail because they have um, rhinestones and stuff on them, but they're really beautiful. And then Jerry Murano uses altered vintage postcards, stamps, and also alliteration and puns like Saguaro U, doing fine, thanks. Here's a couple more of Jerry's and then Carol Morgan also used a saguaro theme. Susan Coral, here's one you probably wanna look on the website cause they're so intricate. She used <clears throat> collage and sewing and she used vintage patterns and cartoons and who knows what else. These are from Ann Lusick. Uh, on the right is an example of neurographic art and it was something that the Sketch It meetup group experimented with. And if you're interested in learning more, you can look on YouTube about neurographic art. And the one in the middle makes me hungry. <laughs> These are some from Judy Bierling, um, her heavily impasto collages. And I would be interested to find out how those went through the mail. Mabel Dean was inspired by uh, Gond art, which is folk art from one of the largest tribes in India. And it's characterized by natural themes and vivid colors. And Stevens did three sets of three cards for her pals, of which I was fortunate to be one. These were done with handmade fun foam stamps. These were inspired by textiles in her home. The one I received with the polka dots was inspired by a towel. And then this one was using marbling with shaving cream and paint. And she said it was really fun, but also really messy. And these are our initials, the three of us. Angela Rigai, um, I guess you would call these scrambled geography. Again, you'll probably wanna look at these close up on your own. These are Vicki Donkersley's and um, when, usually when I get postcards, I save it by the artist's name. And so in the file, they're alphabetized by first name. And so Vicki always has to be last. So this time I saved, I put a number before the artist's name. And so 
She doesn't have to be last this time. And the top one is the queen of the night and the bottom one is a tree stamp and a leaf. And the one on the left is a cyanotype uh, using leaves. And I know the queen of the night was her one that she used in the Wish You Were Here um, collaborative project. Um, some of you may remember Pam, she was secretary when she lived here. She moved to Nevada a couple of years ago, but thanks to the wonders of Zoom, she can still participate in our meetings. And she did a bunch, these are just a few. She decorated the address side as much as the art side. This one is a collage called Garden. I mean, there are three different cards. And then the smaller pictures are the uh, address side of the cards. And one of the common themes this summer was learning something new. And for Pam, it was taking a watercolor class. And the two on the, on the left are examples from her watercolor class. The top one is with complementary colors. And if you recall the, the 20 year celebration art exhibit, Pam had an entry in there. And in her artist statement, she said, she probably would never use dull colors again because she liked so much using bright colors and you can see in her postcards. And these ones um, remind me of something you could make at Santa Teresa Tile Works. So anyway, those are Pam's. Terry Enfield, um, she must have done the card at the bottom in the early summer because she says hoping for the monsoon. Fortunately, we got it. These are Elizabeth Murdoch's, they're watercolors. And she said it was an especially fun time to do this because of COVID. Diane Cheshire, another learning new things. She um, was studying pen and ink drawing via YouTube. And she said she's fascinated with curling leaves. And she said, let's see how much I improve over the summer. But I think they look pretty darn good already. And the card bottom left was her entry in the wish you were here collaborative project. Barb Seyfried, uh, it would be safe to say, is into flowers. Here's some more of her flowers. Francine Schooling was another of my secret pals. And people ask how I can participate if it's supposed to be a secret and all that. So what I do is I make a list totally at random and then I insert my name into the list by people's names that I I recognize everybody's name, but but I don't have a face to put with it. So I get a fun surprise. Here's some more of Francine's. And Kate Roche did um, imaginary landscapes with watercolor and I think some gouache as well. Elizabeth Brazard decorated the uh, address side of the cards. And then like for the top, this, for this example, she sent R.C. Gorman prints on the art side of the card. But I had to um, Photoshop out the actual addresses just for security's sake. But you can see how pretty the address side of the card was. And of these ones, I thought she had sent me duplicates. And then I realized they're not, they're coordinating pairs and the, the the print, the pattern is actually the lining of an envelope, uh, the security lining, and, and they're actually woven. Again, you might wanna look at it closer up. And again, I had to photo Photoshop out, clumsily Photoshop out the uh, addresses, but you can imagine them written in below. These are Heather McLean's Focus on Beauty and uh, Celebrating Imagination. And here's the instruction, learn a new skill. And then uh, the one on the right was Heather's uh, contribution to the Wish You Were Here collaborative project. And these are mine. And the one on the left is, I was gonna make one for each person of my 16, but I got kind of tired of doing them. So I made eight and then I thought, well, I'll make three extra for my secret pals in case one gets messed up in the mail or lost in the mail, I'll have extras. And then if they don't get lost in the mail, I can send it to my pals. So after I got tired of doing that image, I did the image on the right. And the colors on the right are um, graphite tint pencils then gone over with a water brush. And then I um, experimented with neurographic drawing because Mabel Dean had told me about it and I watched the YouTube video. And my problem is I want to impose 
too much control over the result. And so like in this one, I was looking for um, circle. I was really looking for hearts, but I never found hearts. But this one had circles. This one had spirals. This one looked enough like flowers. I added the detail. And then this one, I um, went overboard finding shapes. And I, I sent it to my sister because I couldn't decide if I liked it the best or the worst. And I, it was really fun until I got to the caterpillar and then I got grossed out. So the ones at the bottom, I just randomly chose colors to use. So that was a fun experiment. And then this is the final card I sent to my pals. Um, and I stole the idea from somebody on Facebook. Um, the one on the left, you may recognize she's the express flooring is the best uh, lady. And the one on the right and the other two are um, catalog pictures from L.L. Bean or Land's End. So that's this year's show. We're talking about having a winter exchange. So there'll be more information coming out about that. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sue. That's wonderful. And um, I really appreciate you doing this and organizing it year after year. And it's so much fun for everybody to be a part of this. I really enjoy it and enjoy getting the cards too. Um, okay, let's move on to uh, Jade Quack. Um, and let's spotlight Jade. Um, and Jade's going to talk about the book arts calendar update. Hi, Jade. Hi, how are you? Good. So anyway, um, gosh, I'm suddenly feeling a little nervous. I'm not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> So hello, everybody. My name is Jade. Um, I provide a newsletter and calendar that is all uh, paper and book arts related. So anything that inspires or is related to book arts, uh, I, tr I try to include information. Uh, the calendar includes you know, festivals, conferences, workshops, uh, other book art guilds meetings. Like for instance, it, when we look at um, I hope when we look at the calendar, you'll see an entry for the meeting that we're having right now in the calendar. Gosh, I hope it's there. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I, uh, this is a, a, it's free. It's a service that I offer because I, I truly love the talent that I see in uh, all the book arts meetings that I attend. Uh, and I truly enjoy uh, Sue's uh, presentation of all the beautiful postcards that you guys are just amazing. Oh, just as a side, Bobby, I love that paper rack that you have over there to your right there. I'll have to talk to you about how you made that. Okay. okay. I've got way too much paper. I need to get it organized. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, at any rate, I've always loved paper. Uh, my first memories of paper is when my mom taught me how to do origami structures, you know, a rabbit, a ball, a bird, that sort of a thing. And uh, it, it weaved in and out of my life for a while and then I forgot about it for a long time and then eventually came back again to it when I was looking for a, 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 farewell, a farewell card for a coworker who was leaving and I was just completely not satisfied with what, uh, what was made available at the time. And this was like years and it's like back in like the late nineties. And I ended up making one for myself and one for him and had everybody sign it. And it ended up being so satisfying that I went, uh oh, I'm hooked again. And so at, after that point, I just, it just kind of went to a new obsession with uh, paper. And I said, I want to start taking workshops on how to, you know, continue expanding, making papers. And then next thing you know, my, my cards start looking like books and I had no idea why this happened. I think it's because I was trying to make it more 3D and uh, interactive. And next thing you know, it starts looking more like books. And so I started looking in that direction and met up a lot of my, my now heroes, Teddy Kyle, Claire Van Bleet, uh, Ed Hutchins. Uh, and you know, it was just, it was just wonderful. At any rate, um, let me go ahead and share my screen. And I, oops, hang on a sec, guys. I, uh, give me just one second. And let me 
see if you can share. There you go. So <clears throat> when you use a Wait, desktop uh, monitor or laptop. Okay. We, we're not seeing your screen yet. Hang on a sec. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. How's that? Yes. Okay. So when you use a, a desktop monitor or laptop, I would recommend that you use the month date so you can get an overall picture of what is going on. So if you look on September 9th, so here is the meeting that we're attending today. Um, I try as much as possible to make sure that I include uh, the meeting information in here as well. And you may ask yourself, what's, what's, what's going on with all these colors? Um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to differentiate between in-person and online workshops, meetings, and festivals and conferences. So for example, uh, in-person workshops, if you look to the left here, in-person workshops are shown in blue and red. And, and technically there's really no difference between these workshops. It's just a way to visually separate out um, to separate out the, uh, the workshops that you see on the calendar and you'll see more of it when I show you a different view of it. And the same thing happens with online classes with the orange and light teal. Um, another way to figure out whether it's an online or in-person class. So for example, if I select this particular um, workshop, you'll see that in the title, of the, which is up here. In the title of the workshop, you'll see that I show the location that it's in. So in this case, it's South Thomaston, Maine. Um, and if you look at, um, say this particular online class, you will see in the title of the, of the event that I say online. And when it's, when it's online, not only did I give you the time, if you go down to the description area, uh, I show you the time of when the organization is holding it, but also the times of the four most popular time zones, which you know is you know Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific. Um, sometimes I, I I do include other time zones if it's happening. Uh, for example, I, I think I've included Alaska because of uh, our co our co conspirators in Book Arts Guilds uh, with the the Northwoods uh, Book Guild up in. Anchorage, Alaska, or Fairbanks, Alaska. And then every once in a while, there might be something from the UK, so, or the Netherlands. So the European Union sometimes plays a part. So let me close that out. The other thing I wanted to share with you too is if I, let me look for something here. Okay, so, uh, I'm always looking for workshops. Uh, when I get my newsletters, I'm on mailing lists of hundreds of organizations that I, you know, and I go through hundreds of emails um, every month. Uh, if I find a new workshop between the last time I sent you the newsletter and, and the next one, I tend to in, uh, put a double asterisk in front of the title of the event so that you know that I just found that and maybe it's, you might be interested in, in checking things out more out about it. But another thing I wanted to tell you about the news, uh, about, about the calendar entries is that if you scroll through the description, I try to include as much information as possible. You know, location venue, where you can get more information, how much it might cost, uh, what other workshops that organization or instructor may have. And then if at all possible, I try to include a picture because I think it just, picture tells tells you the story, you know, whether or not you'll be interested in, in, in attending this workshop. So this Sean Sheehy uh, workshop, I found about 12 days ago and added it to the calendar. So let me get the heck out of there. So in the event that you are um, uh, viewing the calendar in, uh, in a, on a smartphone or a smaller screen, I would suggest that you go to the list or agenda view. And when you're on a smartphone, if you look in the upper right corner, when you click on the link to, to this calendar, if you look in the upper right corner, you'll see a downward uh, arrow, a button with a downward arrow, and that is where you can change your views. And so here is, um, 
It looks like it's uh, starting in October. Oh, because I went to October. Uh, it shows all everything that's coming up. Oh, and another thing I want to mention to you too is you mentioned maybe trying to get together with everybody else to do a, a flea market. Looks like the the folks in Santa Fe are doing exactly that in October 16th. So, you know, definitely let me know if you'd like to have that publicized. I'd be more than happy to put it in. It's you know, it would be my pleasure. Um, let's see what else. So, so that is the list view. Here is the agenda view, it's slightly different. So it depends on what speaks to you and what you feel is easier to look at. Um, uh, let's see, what else am I going to? Okay. So for example, oh, oh I was go going ahead. to say we're gonna to have to uh, wrap this up pretty soon, but I want to know if anybody has any questions, if they want to unmute themselves too and ask something real quickly of Jade. Um, Jade has done a remarkable job on this calendar and it's, there's nothing in it for her, right? I mean, you're not selling information. You are that, uh, you know, it's just this wonderful service that you've been doing for the past several years. And it's been wonderful during COVID um, to take classes, have a resource on where we can go take classes. So um, uh, question. Yeah. yeah, quick question. Um, what, what, uh, how do we access this calendar? I'm going to show I, you on, on our page where it is on our paperworks page. We have our okay. link on there all the time. So, um, but I will do that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm a proponent, proponent of wanting to share and, uh, and have everybody else enjoy everybody else's talent because I just see so much talent and I truly take great pleasure in viewing all the talents that you guys have and I just want to make sure that you it's shared and people attend workshops and my motto, motto has been please try to um, schedule your vacation around taking a workshop as far <laughs> as possible once we start traveling again or you know like I said with all the virtual classes that we have please please do um uh, attend as many workshops as you can and, and try something new, try something different. Just, you know, um, yeah, that's, that's my main intent is, is just the sharing of talent and information. You, you've done a, a tremendous job, Jade. Oh, I just love thank it. you, Bobby. But yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's thank been you so great. much. So, and just opening it up to everybody. So, and I think a lot of people don't, we've talked about it before, but I don't think they know where to go for that information. So I'm going to try to show it. And it looks like we're kind of running out of time. I hate to uh, hurry uh, you. No along. problem. You're okay. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No problem. Okay, it's a great. People can ask me questions anytime, or if they want uh, another Zoom session, whatever the case may be, uh, feel free to let me know. Yeah, and Jade, you're a member of Paperworks too, aren't you? Or you yes, are? I am. As a matter okay. of fact. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I know you came last year to our meeting. Uh, oh, two years ago, Madeline Durham, right? You were there yes. for that workshop. Yep. Oh. Love yes. that workshop. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. So, okay. Well, thank you, Jade. And I need to move on real quickly. Um, I was going to announce Mimi Curtin, one of our members. Um, and uh, uh, Mimi, I'm going to ask, I'm going to spot, uh, let's see, could I spotlight you? I'm going to spotlight Mimi. And um, Mimi has some art supplies. Um, do you want to tell us about it? Um, sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, I have a next door neighbor whose husband um, was a painter and he, um, he, he passed away and she has two dozen stretch canvases and um, a set uh, a bunch of art books. One is a series, um, it's Abram Skira art books. And um, let's see, the, the, the canvases are large. They're like four feet by five feet. And if you're interested in painting large, um, these are, are a donation from her. And then if you make a donation um, to Paperworks to the scholarship fund, you know, you may have this stuff and um, I'm going to put my phone number in chat because if you're interested in any of these um, I will you can contact me on how to come and pick them up and take them home 
Okay. And Mimi's been great because she did take a bunch of the art supplies from this house that the wife donated and she has them stored. She has no more room, but she has them stored at her house. And, you know, we were hoping to have a meeting in September where we could see each other and we would have a lot of arts, you know, we kind of uh, sell things for the scholarship fund. So um, hopefully soon we'll, you'll be able to unload those supplies, Mimi. And I thank you for all the work you've done for this. Oh, my pleasure. And um, actually the bulk of the, of the canvases are at my neighbor's house still. Um, but anyway, it's right next door to my house. So uh, if you contact me, I can set the whole thing up if you're interested. Um, we were going to look for a storage place or keep them for a meeting in person, but we can't do that because we don't have that ability. So we can just pick them up from my house or my friend or my, ne my next door neighbor's house. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Mimi. And mm -hmm. as soon as we meet in person, um, we will have uh, more opportunities to share, share items like that. But if anybody wants to pick up those canvases, put a donation to scholarship fund, that'd be wonderful. Okay, uh, we only have a few minutes left and these meetings go pretty quickly. I'm going to do a screen share and just talk about our website really quickly. So um, let's see, let me do my desktop share um, here. Let's do full screen. Okay, um, let's see, let's go to our homepage real quickly. And um, I'm sure you've all been on it, but please do go look at our webpage because we have all our information on there, a lot on there. And I want to say Anne does a wonderful job updating it. Um, she puts four of our artists on there. Right now we have Linda Kern and um, let's see, Rebecca Gans. And I think there was Sherry Pasternak was there. Yes. And um, let's see who else was just there, Margaret Suchlin. So she rotates that. We're not going to have time, but I want maybe next time, I want to, to go and show you work from the Wish You Were Here project. It's all here on our virtual gallery and for the catalog. Um, and you can look at the postcard exchange here information on the Poetry Center. That'll be on another page too. Um, this was our 20 challenge and now it's on our YouTube channel too. So, and our book exchange. Okay, I wanna go quickly to the members. Um, some of you are wondering if you're, you're getting the e-news but you don't know if you're a member or not. You would have gotten a password for 19 uh, for 2021 rather would you would have been sent a password so if you're not sure if you're a member the the renewals will start January 1st of 2022 and if you have not renewed you can contact Heather or Rebecca the links are there and they will look look it up and tell you whether you're a member or not and if you're not um, it's very easy to pay online with um, uh, PayPal or check, or you can do snail mail also. Um, one nice thing, we have a gallery page and please take time to, if you are a member, you get to show off your work that's there and do take time to see what people have done. Uh, under programs, you'll see um, our programs coming up for this year. Today is Andy Burgess, we'll be introducing soon, who's wonderful. Um, this is who we had last year. And we are work, we had it filled, well, we're working on Andy Rush for October. And um, there may be some changes because uh, people might have to be doing this in Zoom instead of live. So we're working on that. Um, Terry's working very hard. Okay, education tab, real quickly here. Um, we have the Tucson Pastel Society is where our classes are being held and directions there. Here are the workshops. 
for our members only. And this is the accordion structure that Maria talked about and will be teaching. And information is all there. Uh, so uh, let's see. And this is the book and paper arts calendar that Jade was just talking about. So if you click on this, you'll get that full spreadsheet. And uh, yeah, you can go take a vacation somewhere and take a book cl class while you're on vacation. Okay, our creative meetup page. Rebecca Gans was our leader for this. Um, she's helping out with membership now. So we don't have any coordinator for this, but creative meetups are anybody who wants to just get together and meet on their own. Um, we can advertise uh, that. We can give you the link to the Zoom meetings. Um, so you can hold it, your meetings by Zoom and you can use the Paperworks account. But the information here about the Poetry Center is here. Uh, the Sketch It group is doing a great job. I think they meet every two weeks. The Art Book Club, Mimi Curtin, and you're reading different books and discussing them, which has been great. And Altered Books is, uh, it was started last spring. I don't think Kat Kirby is continuing with this. So it may need a new leader or, uh, you know, it may evolve into something else, but that's what happened. And you can start your own creative meetup. You can give me a call and I'll walk you through it. Okay, uh, let's see, exhibitions. All right, we have, um, let's see, okay. The Poetry Center is the call for the exhibition is up here and all the information. And then we have a place here for members work in juried shows. Oh, I have to stop. So it's, um, but take a look there. Okay, I'm gonna stop share. How do I get out of this? Stop share.